Hi YouTube, this is John Moeller again. I know I've been focusing a lot on radio listening in my recent videos, but for this video I'll be focusing on programmable pocket calculators, a past and current topic of interest for me. I'd like to answer the question, why use keystroke programmable calculators in the year 2020, long after their heyday in the 1960s, 70s, 80s, and 90s? Why use these over a spreadsheet or an emulator on a computer? And there's several reasons for that. One is the interface. There's great key feel, battery life, screen readability compared with modern computers. They're not distracting. You get all different mathematical operations right at your fingertips with different keys having different mnemonics, both for programming and for arithmetic. And we can take a look, for example, at my TI-95 below. The interface is one thing. Another thing is the programmability and the constraints these put on you while still having the capability of a Turing complete machine. All three of these calculators are Turing complete. They do conditionals, branching, subroutines, labels, and indirect addressing. And for that reason, I thought these would be a great introduction to programming for the sake of algorithms and basic AI concepts. And I'd like to do a course on that in the future Ironically, using an emulator, Free42, which is based on the very popular HP42S, I think one of the last in its class of RPN calculators. So those are the two reasons I still like using these machines today. These are my three keystroke programmable calculators. I also have an HP49G, but that's more fully programmable. That said, let's take a look. This is the TI-95 ProCalc. This was the last in TI's algebraic operating system portables, or if not the last, it was the flagship. It has an 8-bit processor inside, a similar form factor to the TI-74 and CC40, but it's all keystroke programmable. And mnemonics kind of like assembly language for this and the other two portables. You store things in registers, recall them for, from registers. Another reason these are so interesting. Interestingly enough, for the TI-95 and 66, when you compile programs, you can convert labels into absolute addresses, which speeds up execution. So again, there's some different components of programming optimization that you can learn in this really simple model. This has 8K of storage, so plenty of room. 8, 000, imagine 8,000 steps for all your programs in there. Actually, I think 7,200, but I'll be reviewing this in the future so I can say more then. That was the last in the algebraic operating system line. Again, AOS, meaning you do 3 times 4 instead of 3, 4 times, as you would in an RPN calculator, which is a bit slower, but more logical from a human perspective. And that is the TI-95. I also got a TI-66 before that. You'll notice it looks kind of like the HP-16, the Voyager class. Ironically enough, this was called the Galaxy class of calculators by TI. And it's a really quirky, quaint kind of calculator, but by far... I think one of the longest battery lives you'll get on a programmable calculator, the batteries last a couple years on this at the cost of slower execution speed. I got both of these calculators instead of using emulators since there aren't really good Android emulators for the 66 and 95. I think there are a couple PC ones, but I really prefer to have this functionality on something like a cell phone. Both of these are also much better than their antecedent, the TI-59, because you actually see mnemonics for your keystrokes. If I turn on the TI-66, I can go into Learn or Programming Mode. We see the Start. I can enter in something like Still. And I see that mnemonic instead of 0, 3, 2 or something for the key code. And I'll go ahead and delete that. and then exit learn mode. And I'll turn that off. So both of these are two AOS portables. I think I spent probably $70 or so combined for both of them. And I think it was worth spending that money because you don't find good emulators in Android. 
Now, I also have one $35 RPN calculator I got that's many people complain about. It has a few bugs, but it's good for what I do. The HP 35S. This is also has an 8-bit processor as opposed to a 4-bit one. And really nice two-line display and excellent clicky HP key feel. But that said, for my calculator programming class, which I'll start very soon after reviewing these calculators, I won't be using these physical calculators. I want to use something that's easier for everyone to come across. And what that is, is the free 42 HP 42S simulator. It's actually not an emulator. It doesn't emulate the Saturn microprocessor that was if I remember right, was used in the 42, it directly executes the operations for the 42S in C code. It's very, very fast. Here I'm running it on my Palm Tungsten C. There's also versions for Pocket PC if you have an old iPad, and for Android. Why use the Palm? Well, this has a IR port you can see on the right side, so I can print out program listings and results of computations to HP's thermal printers, which are all at, which are also surprisingly common and inexpensive today. So that's a really nice use of your old Palm Pilot handhelds. And that concludes my video. In the future, I plan to make a series of classes using Free42 and that simple keystroke programming model to execute different algorithms and to implement some artificial intelligence concepts, particularly in the context of simple games. With that, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, subscribe down below. In the comments, talk about why you enjoy these calculators so much years and years after they were introduced. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.